You're listening to The Jam Pro Show, all about movies. And today, my guest is award-winning writer-director J.R. Rodriguez. And we're going to be talking about his lovely new film entitled Remember Yesterday. Welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate the time. Thank you. Oh, well, it's my pleasure. It's my pleasure. So Remember Yesterday is is just adorable. It's a really, it's the perfect <laughs> movie for Valentine's Day. It's, and it's coming out around Valentine's Day. So perfect uh, movie for lovers to watch. And anyone who's ever thought about being in a relationship, period. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, there's a lot to it. So JR, um, so our audience knows. Why don't you tell us a little bit uh, about what Remember Yesterday is all about? Well, I, the the idea came about. Uh, I was in a production of Cats, and I'm you know I was playing I was playing Gus, the theater cat, and so I don't really have a whole lot to do. I did one song, and then you know, and I was you know I think I was fifty at the time, and uh, everyone else in the cast was in their twenties, and they were just bloody gorgeous and <clears throat> half the cast was from new york half the cast was from north carolina and what i heard backstage and in rehearsals or whatever was my boyfriend back in new york this my bo my girlfriend that this that, and the other i wanted to see if i could take that and um apply it to people my age um so what the story is it's about a woman growing up, she was in love with the theater and she was in love with this particular guy. And um, the guy became, the guy actually joins the theater community to be with her. Uh, and they grow up together in the theater and they're very young when they meet. So um, at one point he feels like this is his life. So he wants to expand on it and he wants to uh, he wants to study film and he wants to start making movies. And uh, she starts to get jealous because he's actually being requested out of town. She's still the star in in the hometown, but she's not being called away to do things. Um, so they split up and our story takes place 25 years after they split up. And she now owns a diner in town. And um, all of a sudden there's this rumor of a movie coming to town to film. And her brother, who's a little dim-witted, but just the salt of the earth, as sweet as he can possibly be, is one of my dearest friends in the world, Rick Forrester, did it for me. Uh, I actually molded the character around Rick. Um, he tells her about the, the movie and he wonders if it's a John Raymond film. Well, it is. Obviously, if it wasn't, we wouldn't have a movie. So um, he comes to town. They see each other for the first time in her diner. And all of a sudden, the feelings are there. The feelings never went away. She dismissed him in a drunken tantrum, but the feelings never went away. So here we are 25 years later and they're still there. She's just been divorced. Um, she married a drunk. She she felt what Jana Allen does. She, Jana Allen's the lead. Her her portrayal of the character is everything that I thought it would be. I wanted her because she is as kind and sweet and loving as anyone can be. But she knew she settled right. for the husband that she got because it's not the man she was supposed to be with. Um, and so the bickering starts you know i blame you you blame me whatever this that, and the other and then outside of a really wonderful bar that's no longer here um he finally tells her he's like do you remember what happened and she says i was scared he's like you're still scared mm -hmm. so she finally she gets advice from uh, a local director and a choreographer of the local theater community um, and she says, I look at photos too. Everyone looks at photos. Everyone has that passion about what yesterday was. Now, can you bring that passion to today? So of course they start seeing each other again. They start falling in love again, this, that, and the other. And then there was this old rumor about when they split up, was it true? John's mistake is that 
he never asks her. Mm -hmm. He hears the rumors and he never asks her. So the shoe is actually on the other foot. He becomes the insecure one. And so to make up for that, we have a lovely ending that takes place in New York City. So, and that's, uh, that's what it is. And I've, I've been asked so many times, you know, which one are you, Jenny, or are you, John? And I think I'm a little bit of both because I absolutely adore the theater. She actually goes back to the theater in the film. Um, I, I think I'm both, you know, I've always wanted to make movies. But for years and years and years, I never thought I was good enough. So I would hide that in alcohol. I quit drinking about 10 years ago. And it took about it took about eight years to get to where we are now. Uh, thank God for John Landau and Ryan Risley and Marty Landau, who are my producers and Ryan's my editor as well. Uh, they believed in it. And then, you know, I would I would go into those dark places and John I'm getting a little emotional now. John would say, you can do this. If you couldn't do it, we wouldn't be here. And so what we have now is this really charming little film um, about the human experience, which is my favorite subject. And as much as I want to take all the credit, you know, because like I said, I'm an Aquarius. I want to take all the credit. I can't because of an incredible crew, an incredible cast, and then John, Marty, and Ryan. Um, they're the ones who really made the film. I made the story. They made the movie. So Wonderful. Wow. Made. Thank you. What a great story. <laughs> oh, thank you. I, I think I talk with my hands too much. That's what made it exciting. <laughs> well, you know, I'm from the East Coast, so I do too. So. Right. People you went to the new school. That's incredible. I love that school. I know. It's a great That's, school. Isn't it? What a wonderful school. Yeah. I, I did a movie years ago with uh, Peter Falk, and uh, he went to the new school. And um, we talked about the new school for a while because I was at that moment, you know, and, you know, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? And I had auditioned for a lot of places. And I mean, he's just sitting beside me and telling me about this wonderful school in New York. And I researched it. I didn't go there. I ended up going to East Carolina. But um, I, what a wonderful, uh, what a wonderful afternoon I spent with Peter Falk talking about the new school. So when I looked up your bio and I saw that you went to the new school, I'm like, wow, that's so, that's incredible. <laughs> 60 weeks of separation, right? <laughs> it says, please say, but wow, <laughs> how great to spend an afternoon with Peter Falk. I wish I was a little fly on the wall, but that. Oh, he was great. And he was like, it, he was funny. He was like, so, J.R., yeah, J.R., yeah, do, uh, do you do you want a question about Colombo? I'll, I'll, I'll tell you about Colombo. I'm like, no, I'd rather talk to you. <laughs> it was great. I grew up with Colombo. So. Oh, wonderful. Oh, my gosh. You know what? What I like? <laughs> Um, the fact that you allowed yourself to be vulnerable and to let us know uh, as an audience um, about your journey, you know, your journey to making this movie. Uh, it sounds like you and I are both late bloomers. We um, have had these dreams and for whatever reason have allowed ourselves fear, whatever, uh, you know, to stop us. And then finally saying, you know what, life is short. Let's just go do it. Yeah, I, I remember when I turned 50, my mother had just passed away. And um, my father um, was so kind to me. He's like, what do you want to do? You know, and I had already spoken to John a little bit about Remember Yesterday. And uh, he said, what do you want to do? And I said, Papa, I want to make movies. It's a 50, year old, 50 years old, you know, my father was 83 at the time. Yeah. And um, he said, go make movies. He's like, if you fall down, I'll pick you up. Just oh. go make movies. Oh. And so we did. And so I made a number of shorts. And um, then John said, let's do this. And I, you know, I had also spent two weeks in Thailand. So that didn't hurt, you know, sitting on top of a mountain, you know, just meditating. Because mm -hmm. um, we don't get to go around very long. I mean, we think we do. And you know, what a long life. Well, not really. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, this is all I want to do. And I, the movies that I want to do, I want to, 
I love the big special effects films. I really do. I think they're great. I really do. But the the stuff I the stuff that really interests me is the human experience. To me, that's just so important. And I think we lose sight of that. I think we lose sight of how the other half live. You know, there's no one in my cast that lives on Mulholland Drive. You know, there's there's no one in my cast that's on their way to the whiskey tonight. You know, um, they're, they're, they deal with problems. Jana, at the time when we were filming, Jana's husband was deployed. You know, he's a Marine. He was deployed, mm. you know. Um, Adrian had just moved back from Chicago, so he was just a, a, adjusting to, you know, a, a child, a brand new kid. Uh, his his wife got this great job, and then, you know, Adrian, what am I going to do, you know? Um, and so th- I, I like telling the story of the human experience with people who actually have the human experience, you know? That's not to to jade, you know, against these wonderful big names. I worked with them, man. I mean, they've been groovy people. Well, to me, Gene Hackman is a hero. You know, for my first day walking on the set of Loose Cannons, I'm like, oh my God, it's Gene Hackman, man. <laughs> um, it's, I mean, that's incredible stuff. But I don't feel like they're going to be knocking on my door at any time. I, I feel like, you know, I, these wonderful people, he's one of my dearest friends in the world. He's like my brother. Troy Rudisell is one of the two cops in Black Phone. So that's the biggest we've gone, right? My little circle of friends. That's the biggest we've gone. And so you sit there and you watch it with your jaw on the floor. It's like, that's Troy. You know, that's Troy Rudisell. You know, it's so cool to watch. But we know that's not, it's not going to be a string of 25 films just like that. It's just not going to happen. And if anyone's centered, boy, it's Troy. Anyone's centered, it's Troy. <laughs> He's like, hey, you know, we'll get another one maybe. I don't know. You know but I, I just like the human experience. I think we've gotten – I think we've been programmed to like – what we're told to like, well, that's going to really upset some folks, but I really do. I mean, if you have, I have to go see this movie because so-and-so and and -and so-and-so are in it and, and, and they're brilliant. They are brilliant, Mm -hmm. but they're also going to be spending $1,500 on dinner tonight. Right. I'm not. Right. I want those actors, right? (laughs) The ones that are actually struggling with day-to-day life, whether it's financially or not is irrelevant, but there is, I mean, Jana's husband is fighting. He is carrying a gun around while she is filming a movie, you know? Mm. I mean, what concentration does this woman have to have? Jana is mesmerizing to me. Mm. And so is her husband, Doug, frankly. Um, because they live, they live in two completely different worlds and they love each other dearly. You know, it's, it's amazing to me. So. Well, I agree with you. That's why um, the show, and I've said it many, 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 many times, and I'll keep saying it. Uh, the show actually was created. The thought process came out of uh, my film class that I took at the new school many years ago. Really? Yes. And that's Fantastic. Where, where it germinated. And uh, it took a while for it to, you know, for me to finally launch, launch it uh, in June of 2016. So we're, we're heading up to seven years. It's hard to believe. Well, I feel very fortunate to be one of the folks that, uh, that gets to talk to you. Well, thank you. And I, I feel honored that you're on, on the show. So uh, it's mutual. It's mutual. This is, but the show is for films like your film, the the smaller right. films, the independent films, um, the films that are people's passion projects that you're, they're trying to get off the ground and, and it's, they put their heart and soul into it. And that's what the show is about is giving 
a platform to independent and documentary filmmakers so they have a place to talk about their movies and um and hopefully you know gain an audience uh, for yeah. their for their film and that's what this is all about always has been yes would i love getting a big name on my show certainly but do i go after those no unless they're doing an independent film or they've right. used a documentary no, uh, I haven't. I don't go after those uh, kinds of guests. So you're you're my ideal guest. So well, I so, feel very fortunate. Thank you. No, oh, you're very welcome. I feel fortunate to have you on the show too. Let's talk about where you filmed this movie. Uh, Remember yesterday, and how you did put together this cast of everyone that you've talked about already that you love and adore. Right. Well, it's. Uh, Everything I've written, I've written, I've written six of them. Um, and I think three or four of them are good. Two of them are really, really good. I hope that's not arrogant, but they're really good. You have to believe in what you do. <laughs> Profits is a, um, I live in Wilmington, North Carolina. And Profits is a, um, it's a thriller that deals with human trafficking and, um, it interweaves with um, local folklore. And uh, I think it's very important. Here we are in New Hanover County. Wilmington is in New Hanover County. It's the smallest county in North Carolina. And uh, it ranks third in the state in number of cases, which to me is mind boggling. Um, ironically, today on uh, uh, a local NPR show, uh, the director, who is a friend of mine, uh, Dean uh, Don Ferrer, uh, of a safe place. A safe place is a victims organization. Mm -hmm. um, uh, she was actually on uh, a, tele a, a radio show today on NPR. It, it's mesmerizing me. It's so important. Everything about Wilmington to me. Uh, I, I think I think we simplify Wilmington too much. Hey, they make movies in Wilmington. That's great. You know, Dawson's Creek, Madlock, uh, One Tree Hill. Okay, great. What we want to do is we, what, what I wanted to do is we wanted to show the acting talent that we have in Wilmington. Um, we get a lot of big names come through here. I mean, it's, like I said, Gene Hackman was here. You know, we get a lot of folks like Sandra Bullock went to East Carolina. So she shot a number of movies here. Um, what what I wanted to do, what I wanted to do originally is I, you know, I wanted to have a five million dollar budget and, you know, and have all the bells and whistles and this, that, and the other. Mm -hmm. That's going to lead me to Ryan Risley, but um, we didn't have that. We didn't have that. So um, I raised a little bit of money on um, on uh, um, uh, Indiegogo. And uh, I think we got up to like $17,000. And I asked John if we could start. He's like, well, yeah, we can. We're going to run out of money because I had to have Sean Llewellyn shoot it. And Sean is expensive because Sean works on really big movies. But we're old pals and he cut us a deal. But um, he's like, we're going to run out of money. I'm like, when we run out of money, then I'll go raise some more money. And that's what I did. Um, we did not have the, we did not have the investors that, uh, a lot of investors made promises, um, yes. but they didn't invest. Uh, thank goodness for the ones we did. Uh, we had some really, and they were so supportive. I had one woman, I think I'm not supposed to say her name. So, um, I had one woman from Arkansas. She works with so they work like this, you know, on the Zoom thing, um, which terrifies me, by the way. But um, she works with a friend of mine, and a friend of mine told her about the movie. She's like, I'll send you $5,000. And she did. Yeah. Um, and so with her, with Ken White, Dr. Ken White was, I mean, Ken White bent over backwards. Um, and we raised a total a total, not counting the money I put in, uh, but we raised a total of $42,000 and we made a movie. And my friend, Ann uh, Quattrini, who has produced 
a number of movies. She was out. She was out of the country. She, you know, she has a place in Italy. Nice. That's why we went to the Florence Festival. Uh-huh. Uh, I said, if we get it, I said to Anne, I said, if we get in, I'll come to Florence. I'd never been there. She says, uh, she says, okay, well, that'll be great. And um, we got in, so I ended up going to Florence. Oh, shucks. How exciting. Uh, Florence is incredible. Oh, yeah. Um, but we, th- I went and raised money five different times because we ran out of money five times. Uh, or we ran out of money four times. I raised it five times. Um, when we couldn't find Jenny, we just couldn't. We had tried. They even plugged me in one time to read for John and, and it looked okay, but it just didn't pop. You know, we needed it to pop. And uh, Jenny Gooley, who's a, a, a wonderful casting director, and, and she's pals with everybody in town. Um, she said, do you know my friend Jana Allen? And I'm like, no. She introduced me to Jana, and Jana read the script, and she's like, I'd really like to do this, but I need to read for you. I'm like, no, you know, I, I've seen so many, I, you don't. She's like, but I want to audition for it. I'm like, you can cut an audition if you want. I'm, the role's yours. Once we had Jana, everything fell into place. We had to get Adrian because we had to, what we wanted. We wanted two actors that could fake being in their 20s and look like they're in their 40s. And so once we got Adrian, I just asked Adrian in passing, because he's an old pal of mine, his name's Adrian Monte. Um, I just asked him in passing, I said, do you want to read a script? And he said, sure, I'm, whatever. He, he runs a, he, he has, he's the head of a, an improv group in town. And I said, you want to read a script? He said, yeah, I'll read it, you know. And he's like, man, this is really cool. I really like, this is such a charming script. I'm like, you want to play John? He's like, what? I said, do you want to play John? He's like, yeah. And so we, once we had Jana, everything just started dropping, you know? And so the first day we shot, we shot the kids, right? We shot the, the flashback scenes. I played Oliver Warbucks a lot, a lot. And the last production I was in uh, of Annie Warbucks, um, I just grabbed those kids. I, and that's who we shot it with. I, I looked at their parents. I said, can they do a movie? The parents couldn't say no because I asked in front of the kids. <laughs> um, and so uh, we shot them. And uh, once we got that out of the way and we started looking at it, I'm like, we might actually have something here. <laughs> Um, and then December 15th, 2019 was the last day she took us a year because I had to go back and raise money. So it took us a year to, uh, to get it shot. Um, and then on December 15th, I'm watching the last bit and it's taking place outside of one of the local theaters here. I'm watching the last bit and I'm just mesmerized with what's going on and john landau i can't say enough about john landau my producer he came over and put his arm around me and he said you've made a movie and it was i'm like i was thrown for a loop i'm like it was a bit of a struggle but it wasn't something that i couldn't do you know when you first the first day shooting you know, I thought, you know, well, I wonder, I can't wait to see what the top of Everest looks like, you know, <laughs> like I was going to climb this big mountain. It wasn't a mountain. It was actually a stroll down the street. But the frustration that I had, I'm a Buddhist, the frustration that I had was caused by me, not by the project. It was caused by me and my doubt in me. It always is, right? Right. <laughs> always. Um and so then we got it over Ryan Risley and he's like, and Ryan cost a lot of money, mm-hmm. but Ryan saw the dailies, or he saw the rough, or he saw the dailies of it. And he's like, oh, I'll do this. And John asked him, he's like, well, how much are you going to charge? He's like, let me get the rough cut done. Yeah. And he <laughs> did that for, I mean, it took a while. 
It took a while because sound was kind of beat up, but um, it took about two and a half years. Mm -hmm. um, but after every stage, John would ask me, how much are you going to charge? I don't know. Let's get through this. <laughs> You know, and so finally I'm like, I can't stand it, man. How much is, what are we going to, how much are we going to pay him? And John's like, I don't know. And so we figured out a deal and we paid him that. But John and I just felt like he had worked so much on this thing. I just looked at him point blank. We were sitting, we were having coffee at a local coffee shop. I said, Ronnie, you want part of the movie? He's like, I do. Okay. That's what it was, you right. know? And, uh, and so that's how that story. told me yeah. how special the movie is. It does. And I wish we had more time to talk about it. But before we go, I want to let our listeners know uh, where they can find Remember Yesterday. Where can they watch it, JR? There, we're on, we, we uh, start streaming on uh, Valentine's Day. I have to think of the date, February 14th. I'm single, have been a while. Um, <clears throat> but uh, we are on uh, Amazon Prime. We're on Vudu. We're on Spectrum. We're on, um, we're on like 30 of these things, man. And I, I was mesmerized that Gravitas did that. Gravitas says, okay, we're going to put you on this. And I'm like, holy smokes. Yeah, Are you great. kidding? They're great. Um, they're great and Gravitas has been very kind to us. So. They're, and they're great. Yeah, they are. I've, I've done a lot of movies that Gravitas has done. So yes, they are great. Jay, we had more time. Unfortunately, we don't, but such a joy and such a pleasure to have you on the show. And I thank you so much. Much success with Remember Yesterday. Everybody seek it out. Yeah. It's a very good Valentine's movie. Thank you, thank you so, so much. much. I Thank really appreciate you. it. Thank you. You're welcome. I appreciate you. Thank you. Peace.